Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Art Whisperer 88. On your screen you will see a, a uh, assembly of various pieces of cardboard and bubble wrap. Uh, I had these extra pieces of mat board and instead of throwing it away, I thought maybe I can do some experimental stuff and use them as stencils. And since these have a corrugated surface, I thought maybe they can produce some interesting textures. So I've uh, arranged them here on the gel plate. And I will start with a dark color. I'm going to use indigo and use that as a starting point. Now, since these are found objects, I'm not sure how well they will stick to the plate. So I just have to be very careful. So I'm going to use a small brayer. See, these are trying to move already. And like I said, these are purely experimental. kind of rough terrain, if you ask me. Uh, I'm used to the reusable stencils, which are very thin. Not only are they thin, but they stick to the plate very well, so I'm not as worried. But this is for the sake of experimentation, so I figure, you know, why not try it? since uh, I have this material, which otherwise will be thrown away. So I have a feeling that this is a departure from my usual very clean cut, clearly defined shapes. This is going to be a little more on the free form. I think the right term is loose. It's a little looser not as formal. Okay. Let me just get my sketch pad so I can so I can offload this color. Okay. 
and I save these plastic trays when I buy meat from the grocery because they are very handy. They're washable. And they're very sturdy. It's another thing that I like to reuse rather than toss it. Now what I'm going to do, so I got my hands dirty, congratulations, okay, so what I'm going to do is, since I have all these open spaces, I'm going to use another brayer. and flatten out. Okay. So I'm hoping there will be a thin area of paint and a thick area of paint. Okay. So now I will air dry this. I'm going to consider this as a first layer. So I'll be back in a few minutes and wait for this first layer to dry. Okay, I'm back from a short break. And I think this layer of indigo is dry now. I'm going to apply raw sienna. some red oxide and this is a very bright color this is azo orange this is almost like a neon orange so I'll have three zones here Starting with the raw sienna. Blending into the azo orange. It's pretty flaming color. Now I'm hoping that this second layer is going to wake up the first one and pull it up. 
At least that's what I'm expecting. It may not work. I always keep that in mind that these are experiments with a gel plate and they can be unpredictable. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to take this opportunity to try Fabriano. It's called Unica. And I think it's specifically designed for printmaking. It's a bit thinner. It has a beautiful plate finish. And I thought I'd give it a try. It's also very reasonably priced. I bought a package of 10 for something like $30 or thirty dollars and thirty cents something like that so each sheet comes out to about three bucks and change that's not bad at all for fine art paper made in Italy I just hope that this does not tear on me because it's thinner. It's not as beefy as the uh, artistical papers. But I'll give it a shot. So I'm leaving this on for about 10 minutes. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes and the edges are buckling. That means the paper has absorbed most of the water content. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Oh, I think I have some tearing. That's what I was afraid of. And I think this wouldn't happen to a different paper that's thicker. I just have to grin and bear it. Oh my. The texture is fantastic though. I have to look at the bright side. I'm gonna try to get it from the other side.
no such luck. It's tearing either way. I guess you get what you pay for. Voila. This is like the torn poster walls in the subways. I, I think it's not beyond repair. Um, you see, it, the, the paper is so thin that once the first layer comes off, you can see right through it. But um, this is, the, the leftover is too good to waste. I'm going to try to retrieve this with something that's a little more fluid. And maybe I'll mix some fluid matte medium on it. And I have to do some damage control before um, I think I will let this dry first and then try to smooth down the tears. So I, I just want to demonstrate to you that things can go wrong in the shop. And I take them in stride because that's how I learn. Um, let me do a close-up. I find these. Let me show you. I find this texture spectacular, though. I can't knock it. I love the uh, wonderful textures produced. It's just that the paper was too thin and I think I left the paper too long. I think 10 minutes is too long for a thin paper. I should have pulled it maybe after three or four minutes. So um, you live and learn. So I'll be back in a few minutes and do some repairs. Okay, I'm going to try to pull this up. I have here some Arctic. And since this is the tail end of this tube, I'm going to put it in a separate container and try to mix. This is uh, aqua green. I'm going to try to mix all the leftovers together so I use up every little drop. like getting every last bit of toothpaste. Then I will apply some fluid matte medium. It reminds me almost of the consistency of cake frosting. In fact, that's exactly what this looks like. Oh, 
I hope that's not too much. Okay, let's see how I, let's see how I make out with this. Okay, let's see. That's more like it. It's coming off a little more easily. And it is picking up these uh, beautiful textures. This is almost like uh, the seawater in Bermuda. Check that out. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful texture. So, uh, it did come with a price, but I'm very pleased with this. And I think there's still more to come. In fact, I'm going to add some what's left of my Raw sienna. I'm hoping that the worst is over. That was a miscalculation on my part to leave it for 10 minutes. 
I actually can pull it off after two minutes. So instead of blaming the paper, uh, it's what you call driver error, a miscalculation on my part to leave the paper on too long. Because I have to say, it is a beautiful paper. It feels very smooth under my hand. And has a beautiful white color. And best of all, it's not expensive. Okay. I think I have another winner. These textures are quite incredible, if I may say so. Check that out. There are little bits of paper left from the part that got torn. But that can be remedied with a little Mod Podge or Mac Medium. But I think the, the background is pretty spectacular. Try this parchment. So um, I think what turned out, uh, what appeared to be a terrible train wreck at the beginning of this video turned out to be a, a huge success in terms of ghost prints. I think the trick here is to figure out the timing of when to pull the paper off and to pull it off when the paint is still moist. Not to wait until it's dry and it turns into a glue. It's 
it's interesting how it picks up some of the torn pieces and uh, it glues itself to the uh, surface, much like a map. I think this will be more interesting at when I do a recap and I'll be able to show you the extreme close-ups. Let me try this green oxide. And then I'll have some, this very bright azo orange on one side. Now, this is just a, a thought that came to my mind. I don't think the ultimate goal in making ghost prints is to pull every single tiny bit of paint off because I feel that that's a very unrealistic goal. I think a more realistic goal and more practical goal is to create something that is interesting enough without getting too tied up with the technicalities because after all this is art it's not science and it's never exact and it varies from person to person That's just my opinion. Okay. Please do not tear on me. I think if I had left this for another minute, it would have started tearing. This is very much like the 
abstract expressionists of the 1950s, 1960s. I think I'm going to stop here because the, the rest of this is torn paper. And um, I don't know if this is going to work any further. I might give it another try. I'm going to use a bright red. Just clean this up a little bit. It's the gift that keeps giving. I think I'm getting down to the first layer because what's left is uh, the paper that got torn off. In fact, I hope I can, I hope I can get this off from the plate. I don't want to ruin the plate. So here is the red print. I will show this to you later when this is dry. But I think the texture is very interesting.
So I will show you how I... This is a mixture of detergent and water. And I just spray it on my plate. And I always have this handy. This is my nylon scrubby. And I'm really not pressing or I'm just gently wiping it. This is quite a bit of paper that got torn off. Okay. Now, um, the good thing about having the plate conditioned with baby oil frequently is that when you have this type of situation where you have paint that is stuck on the plate, paint or paper, whatever, the oil content allows the uh, stuff to get released when you do your cleaning. And this is provided that you clean this immediately. That's why I'm, I'm showing you how this is done uh, as soon as I finish. I don't allow this to dry even for a few minutes. I try to clean it up right away. And I think this plate is due for another baby oil treatment. Okay. Okay, everybody, here we are at the damage control part of this video. So as you can see, this is pretty bad tear. And there are these pieces of paper sticking up. So this is a mixture of Mod Podge and water. Uh, I kind of watered it down a lot. And I'm hoping that the water will soak into the fibers of the paper and force the ripped portion to lay, lay flat. like this part here. And hopefully the glue will strengthen the part that is torn. There are some pretty bad spots here. So 
So I will do it section by section. Now I am hoping that I can turn this lemon into lemonade. Uh, I'm going to see if I can. This is a warm up sheet of tissue paper that I have been saving. It has all kinds of brush strokes and uh, gestural stuff. So I will see if I can use it as a liner somehow. What I do sometimes when there's a tear in a paper, I also put a piece of backing from the, the rear just to reinforce it. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary to do here, but I'll know better when this dries.
I think that takes care of the damage. I think also it, it's a very strong graphic statement. Um, so I'll know better when this dries if I need to apply a second layer. So that is my damage control for the train wreck of the first print. Now here is the second print, which doesn't, thankfully doesn't have any tears. Now I'm going to cover this area here with all these bald spots or holidays with this Then I have this very long vertical graphic element, which are some letters that I printed out. And here is another piece of warm up paper. And here's a fragment of a stencil. Now hopefully this generous layer of glue is going to strengthen the parts that have weakened because of the uh, slight tears. So the glue actually serves a double purpose. One is to 
allow the collage elements to stick. And the second purpose is to strengthen the paper fibers. Okay. That is collage number two. Here is the green one. It's, it's still a little moist, but I think once I put the collage, it will straighten out.
that's it for the third piece. Now for this beige piece, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm not going to rely on stencils to create the forms. I'm going to paint directly on the plate. And I'm going to make use of the leftover turquoise paint.
I like that. Check this out. I want to see if this will create some stark contrast with this red. If normally I would choose black, but I'm trying to aim for something different. Pretty cool. It's a little piece of paper that's stuck. So this is the second layer. Now I will contemplate maybe a third and final layer for these guys. I have one, two, three, four, five prints in this session. That's not bad, considering there was a big disaster at the first 30 minutes. So uh, let me let this air dry and then I will be back to Think about what's next. Okay, here's the red piece. And I have assembled these pieces ahead of time just to uh, streamline the process. Now these are fragments of old stencils and I thought they look interesting. So takes a while to 
have the fibers of the paper lay flat because these have been sitting around for a while. But the uh, Mod Podge eventually makes the uh, piece lay flat. especially that it's uh, watered down. There. Oh, here's one more. We're coming to the last one, which is the beige one. It's the most um, minimalist. So I'm applying this large piece here. Okay. So what I do is I am trying to assign certain elements in the uh, vacant spaces to create some kind of dialogue okay I think this is the last piece
Okay, that's quite a bit of problem solving. I learned quite a bit today. I was given requests from many viewers to assess Fabriano Unica. Now, I like the paper. I find it a little thin for my taste, but it doesn't mean that it's not a good paper because not everybody works the way I do. In order to do successful jelly printing, the paper has to hold up to constant pulling. Puts a lot of stress on the surface of the paper. This may be preferable for other methods of printmaking. Uh, but it's a good paper and it's not expensive, so uh, that's the reason why I chose it to try it out, because these are uh, largely experimental works. And as you can see from the beginning of this video, when there's a terrible mistake, I'm, I'm not going to feel bad because it's, it's not that expensive of a paper. But to me, the learning experience is more valuable than uh, dollar amount. So anyway, let me air dry all of these and then I will recap and show you the details one by one. Okay, this is my favorite part of the video. Uh, where, where I do the close-ups. So this is the first one, the one that had a terrible tearing incident. And I think it uh, worked out with the uh, damage control. So here is close-up. And I think the tissue paper does a good job of uh, balancing out the uh, tears and giving some kind of graphic elements. So that's the first print. Here is the turquoise piece. And I think the turquoise works very well with the uh, red oxide. Kind of has a map like appearance. That is turquoise print number two. Here is the one with the raw sienna. I think the uh, textures are very effective and I introduce some of my 
leftover collage elements. And here is a map of the constellations from an old German uh, book. Okay, moving on. This is the one with the oxide green and orange. So these little bits that you see here are the actual pieces of paper that got torn off and they ended up they ended up being glued to another print. Here's the red piece. Now this this uh, red has quite a bit of purple in it. And this is the uh, fragment of an old stencil. That's the red piece, and here is the last piece. I think the uh, teal brushwork is effective. As a counterpoint to the textured background. Okay, so that is the last print with the collage. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to invite everyone to check out my new website called artwhisperer88.com. And it contains a collection of all my work in one place. And for those who would like to buy some artwork, please feel free to ask me any questions. I also like to thank everyone who has been supportive and given some support to my PayPal account to help to keep this channel going. So thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed this video. 
and I hope to see you next time.